Good morning, everybody. On this uh, crisp November day, this uh, month, uh, traditionally, many churches across the globe focus on the end times. Jesus' words on the last day and last days, uh, the apostles' revelation, etc. If you want to join our Sunday Bible study for this month is on Revelation. Come and hang out with us for that. But uh, we'll be talking about that today. Jesus has some very specific words, and if you wait, you're going to hear me tell you when Jesus is coming again. So uh, later on, if you can make it till, uh, I'm joking, I'm not going to tell you when he's coming again. So, uh, But he is coming, and it's going to be okay. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the, uh, in the message, etc. Uh, let's see here. This uh, week, too, kind of exciting. Friday is Trivia Night. If you've not taken part in St. James Trivia Night, it's a good time. So sign up now. we got a lot of people already ready to go. Uh, fun time. Uh, bring a beverage of your choice. You hang out and play trivia and have a lot of laughs. That's this Friday. Check it out. If you want more information, uh, let me know or... Uh, uh, Mr. Warren Gass can fill it in for you. Let's enjoy a little time of silence as we prepare our hearts and our minds for his beautiful word.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. O Almighty God, merciful Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve the present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I... and. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us promises that are true, that are sure, that we can stand upon in the midst of uncertain times. We ask you to rule, to govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we would be enabled to live out this faith with the confidence of the gospel that is grounded upon your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall then set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in the wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on that day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I have commanded him at Horeb for all of Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading today is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but will toil and labor we work night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. 
This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. While some were speaking, some of his disciples were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said to them, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will be not left one stone upon another that won't be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will these things be? What will be the sign when these things are about to take place? He said, see that you're not led astray, for many will come in my name saying, I'm he, and the time is at hand. Don't go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, don't be afraid, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. And then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they'll lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it now in your minds. Don't worry. Don't meditate beforehand how to answer. I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You're going to be delivered up, even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. Some of you they'll put to death. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. In fact, for women, alas, who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, there will be a great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall, fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us uh, confess the faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Any uh, little people want to come up and hang out? For a quick message with me, come on up here. We got one. We got another back there. All right. Hi. I like the enthusiasm. Hi, how you doing? Great. That's super. Good morning here. Here's some more rumblings. Okay. All right, okay, you want to you take the back seat over there? Okay. Good morning, people. How are we doing? Mm-hmm. Look at this. What is going on there? 
What is going on? Hmm. Would you stay in a building like that? On the cover, you see that on our cover of our bulletin? Oh, I hear, oh, here we go, here we go. All right. <laughs> What's happening there? Does that look like it was well built? Yeah, no. What's wrong with it? It's tilted. High and it's tilted. I know. It's it looks like it's going to fall over. It is. Yeah. It's going to fall, it's going to crash and eventually fall. On. It's going to fall. It looks on. exactly fall like that, yeah. Uh -huh. and the person and hundred people are going to Oh my! Yes. You sound, are you the daughter of an architect? You sound you sound yes, like I it. Am. Oh, I thought so. So what is going? So something happened there. What do you think happened? It was on tilted ground. It's on what tilted ground? Yeah, something it's, like that. It, it, it wasn't built properly. It wasn't built properly on the they from the very beginning. On this side and not on this That's side. exactly what it looks like. It was actually what happened. What? It was built on kind of like wobbly, like you said, ground, shifting sort of sandy, and it wasn't very deep. So they started building it. Have you ever built something together on something, like with logs or Legos, right? And one side sinks. And if you don't put it on a good, flat, strong surface. The other side's going to sink. Yeah, it's going to sink in. It's going to fall over. That's what's happening. Do you know what place, you know what this is? This is actually a, and a million people are going to perish? Okay. You guys are really focused on that. Do you know what this is called? It's a famous place. Have you heard it before? Is it called Germany? No. <laughs> the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Have you ever heard that? Pisa. Yeah. And you can go out to Niles, Michigan. Someone thought they would do a replica of it. Everybody seen it before? Yeah. Only in the suburbs would you find something like that. So it's a replica of, uh, of uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa. So they built this and it started falling down because it wasn't put on strong, on a strong then floor. How is that building still? That's fine, because they built it right. <laughs> so what you're standing on, let's see, stand up. Let's see how this, is this ground pretty good? Yeah. No. Can you stand on this? Are you going to fall over? No. This church seems pretty good too, doesn't it, right? Yeah. It hasn't really moved much at all. Yeah. You know why? It's got a real good foundation. Can you say foundation? Foundation. 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 It's, it's deep in the ground, and it's really strong, so it holds you up. Who else holds you up? The classic answer, yeah. God. God does. Talk about a foundation. So, yes, even when tough times come or you're scared or you're nervous, who's got you? Who holds you, right? And his promise of eternal life and forgiveness, you can stand on that and be confident, right? Will you fall? Does God have you? Yeah. Or even if we do fall, who catches you? God. He does. He forgives and he gives life. Isn't that cool? Yeah. He's our foundation. foundation. You're not going to say it this time? Okay, let's pray. Ready? Ready? Re repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus. Thanks, for me thanks for loving me and holding me and, and promising me that I'm forgiven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. Thanks for coming up here.
things take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, I uh, had to use the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa illustration earlier. I meant it for this sermon, but I forgot to get a children's message ready. So you've already heard that, the Leaning Tower. And it's true, there's a Leaning Tower of Niles, apparently. Not quite as exciting, because it's, you know, in the suburbs of uh, Chicago, but also uh, smaller, et cetera. Anybody been there, though? It really exists, like half the size. Okay, Matthew. What's that? You what? It's by Target. So that's the American way. <laughs> like, you go to Italy or you can go to Target and then stop by the Leaning Tower of Niles. Uh, so anyhow, but it really was, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great example, I think, of uh, bad, poor, poor building, right? The very the biggest problem is that it actually started out wrongly on a bad foundation. Literally, while they're building it, it actually began to sink in because the foundation was too shallow and it was on a sandy material, et cetera. Never should have happened. They should have figured that out. But they kept it going. They had to stop building it for a long while. Then they got back after it because they started it. And now it exists only because we have artificial ways of, of helping it. And it's become, literally, I think, you literally, it's, it's illegal or something. You can't fix it now because it brings in a lot of money from people like us who go all the way to Italy to see a pretty much unimportant object, except that it's leaning. But that's, uh, that's what we do, right? Uh, anyhow, it's a lot cheaper just to go to Niles if you want to check that out. So, uh, you know, but, but that's, uh, you know, I'm not an architect at center. We got a lot, we have a lot of, sorry about that, we have, a, we have a lot of architects here and engineers, et cetera, but the very foundation is so important, very basic to make sure it's sure, let alone deep, and can hold whatever you're going to build up. Bear the weight and last the ages. I love uh, uh, living in Chicago. I've got, um, sometimes you always do your Chicago tourist stuff because family's coming in. This summer, for some reason, I was on the boat tour, the architect tour, like three times. Like, I know that, I know every building now. It is, but it is beautiful. We live in a gorgeous city, remarkable architecture and feats of architecture. Uh, really blow your mind, not just in aesthetic beauty, but how they can build something off just a small little bit. You know what I'm talking about? There's one building right downtown. It's a small, narrow way that it just goes out on. It's just, mar it's just amazing. But it begs the question, your own life. What are you building on? Do you have a shallow foundation that when tough times come, you just tip over? Or there's not much meat to it? There's not much meaning, so it doesn't really quite work to hold you up? What are you standing on existentially? In your life, what's your foundation? Is it shallow? The, the uh, disciples and Jesus um, were leaving the temple when today's conversation came up. And Jesus, he comes to Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday, uh, the triumphal entry, right? He enters in on a uh, colt and um, he's come to die and rise. But before that, he would go to the temple and teach, and everyone came because he's this healer, miracle worker, and spoke so well. So everyone listened. So he'd be in the temple, and then he would each day go back up the Kidron Valley, up to the Mount of Olives, and stay that night. And he'd go back and forth. And this time, Luke tells us, he must have been in the temple teaching. In fact, we know he was, because this is when he was in the temple and everyone else was staring at the big awesome things and the big gifts that the powerful people were giving and Jesus was looking at what? You remember? What's Jesus looking at? Jesus is always looking at something else that we're, we're not looking at. He's looking at the poor widow who gave everything she had but it was really worthless. It was nothing. Jesus was looking at that, right? Anyhow, the disciples are not conscious. They're not, they never put two and two together. So they're leaving the temple and they are talking, again, not about the poor widow and the humility and how those that have nothing have everything in Jesus. Nope, nothing deep like that. Instead, their eyes are back focused on the big stones that built that temple. And this temple was extraordinary. It was one of the largest buildings in the civilized world, 
People would come from all over to see it. It was incredible. A feat of architectural wonder, like the pyramids in that sense. It drew people from everywhere, and it was beautiful. In fact, Herod the Great got that name because he was a brilliant politician. He made Rome happy, and he made the Jewish people happy by building onto their temple. So by this day, it's just gigantic stones and just beautiful adornments. And Luke says the disciples are talking about the beauty and Jesus, and it must have been loud enough that Jesus hears it. And Jesus crashes another party. And he says, look at those stones. Those stones you're talking about? Yeah, every single one's coming down. Thanks, Jesus. He does this all the time, by the way. <laughs> crashes the party. They're focusing. Everything's coming down, right? Now, this kind of frightens them because really it's quite, that's, that's quite a prediction because it was seemingly impossible to say that every stone's going to fall down. It was such a large, like the, like the uh, pyramids. And so then they ask this, wow, what are the signs? When's this going to happen? Tell us when and what are the signs? And then Jesus goes off on not just about how the temple's coming down, but about how Jerusalem is coming down and the Jewish people are coming down and will be scattered. But it's even bigger than that, how the whole universe is coming down. It's all crashing down. So you better have a foundation. You better have something to stand on. The disciples were obsessed with the decoration and not the foundation of the temple. Make sense? Obsessed with the periphery of things and not the very reason for the temple. And so that shocked them that it was going to fall down because they love that. Jesus wanted them to focus on something else, to look at something else, something that that poor widow got, that her hope was not in stuff or her own accomplishments or her health, but in God, who is the foundation of that temple, and in Jesus. It's scary stuff to listen to this, but it's very clear the world will end. All things will stop. And it's not pretty. And it's not natural. It's ending. That's hard to hear. But you know what? I think it's more and more believable, isn't it? The stability of this world, the temple that we have built. I mean, I think 10 years ago, this is kind of ridiculous to think that America would end. But now, in the last 10 years, I think it's very believable that our institutions, no matter how strong, no matter how great, nothing wrong with them in that sense, but it's not going to last forever. Because people are that insane, actually. And with the COVID, et cetera, it's very believable, isn't it? We thought we had a temple and we adored those great stones and offerings and how gigantic it was, and we thought it was immovable. And Jesus says, it's all coming down. And I think now we should start to believe it. But you got to be insane to not believe it, even before the last 10 years. If you know human history, <laughs> things that we make, they're not, they might not all be towers of pizza, but it's all gone. There's great works of architecture throughout the world that are gone, and they were on a good foundation. So what is your foundation when it all falls apart? And let's not just talk about the end of the world, Christ coming again. Your own personal crises. We don't need to have some focus that Jesus is coming again to make us think that things are going to end. Your own things in your life. Your life. If you've been keeping track, there's an end. What are you standing on? What is your foundation? You know, I think it's sadly, even for Christians, very shallow and very shifty. Even as those who should know better, if you look at how we live, where our money goes, 
what words we use, how we talk, how we treat one another. Our foundation, I think, in the Western world, and definitely for Christians, is us and our happiness. Like, that is what we stand on. What do I have to do to be happy? I deserve to be happy. We even tell our kids that. I hope, in fact, we, I hear this all the time. I say it myself. I get it. All I hope my, my kids are happy. That's like it. Your happiness. Our whole universe is about chasing after our happiness. And what a shifting sand is that. How dumb. You know this just from your own personal experience. Your happiness is always changing. You always want more. It's always going here and there. It is shallow. And yet that is the world view of the Western world is pursue your, we have it in our declaration, pursue your happiness. And again, that's fine, but that's really no foundational talk. It's illogical. It's irrational. It doesn't work in any culture or religion, to be honest. But I think that's what we stand on. Self-centered, discovering my own identity, doing anything I can do to make me happy changing and rearranging relationships and even myself so that I can be happy, and it's always elusive. And with our technology, I think we've sort of invented the false illusion even more, extend a little further. We can make ourselves happy, and yet here we are. Statistically, this is not a Christian survey, more unhappy, more lonely, more people seeing psychologists and therapists than ever, more depression, etc., shallow foundation and we should know better repent what are you standing on Jesus when he talks about the end times it can get kind of frightening when you're reading what he's saying and you can get lost on sort of trying to think it's some sort of riddle you're supposed to solve it isn't don't ever look at the Bible as a riddle you think God's a jerk it's not a riddle Extremely clear. But the key to what Jesus says is not try to figure out when exactly this is going to happen and that happened. Who's Saddam Hussein? What's Putin doing? Like, the key is it's going to happen, it's going to end, but it's okay because Jesus says, I've got you. He's your foundation. We at St. James need to remember this. We're going to talk about building. Don't get too hung up on it. Don't get too hung up on the stones and the offerings and the decoration and not think about the foundation, which is Christ and the good news. That's why this building exists. That's why we have a school. If it's not sitting on the promise of Jesus, it's worthless and will fall and fail our kids. And the same goes for your own personal lives. What is your foundation? This is a good time to rethink this. Because Jesus is a foundation. It's beautiful. Jesus speaks these words, and it's scary. I, got, I have got to disconnect them. Wire just a second. That might do it. Let's see if that does it there, Brad. What's that? Uh, Jesus speaks these words. As he comes into to Jerusalem, and what's he doing? In chapter 22, Luke tells us that the chief priests and Sadducees and all the, those in power got together to figure out how to destroy not the temple, but Jesus. And indeed, they thought that they did, putting him on the cross. But this is the joke. I mean, we got some great architects here at St. James, but Christ, how better? That with two pieces of wood and with his body laid on the cross, he creates a foundation that you can hang your hat on, that you can stand on. Forgiveness. With his own blood, he builds a building that you can live in. Even as sinners, even as people that build things on dumb foundations. In Christ, you are forgiven and you can stand on that. No matter what the devil says about you or about your past, is blotted out in the blood of Jesus. And he buried it. And three days later, talk about building a structure that lasts forever. He rises from the dead. What greater foundation to stand on than something even when it dies, rises again. That's what we stand on. Promises of a risen Christ. 
And that's what we can build a life on. That no matter what comes at us, those terrible things that do, those fears and those, those frightening things, whether it's health or a job, etc., nothing can knock it off because we know we're going to be okay. We're standing on the promises of the risen one. If he died and rose, surely we can handle sickness, job loss, and just the fear of living in this world. He's got us. He will not let us fall. Brothers and sisters in Christ, stand on that foundation each morning. Remember that. May that begin your day. May you build your existence not on you and making yourself happy, but upon what you have in Jesus. And may that make you happy, actually. But it may also empower you to live freely, actually, not desperately trying to please yourself, but serving others and taking care of others and sharing this foundation with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us rise for prayers. Actually, let's first share the peace of Christ with one another. We've got peace in Jesus. Let's give it to each other. One of these days, I'll remember, I'll remember this. Peace. Church of in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, in the midst of these last days, we ask that you would continue to lift our eyes to your Son, Jesus Christ. He's the one from whom we receive help, calm, peace. Turn us from the fear of what's happening in our world to instead stand confidently on the word of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would uphold all teachers, all pastors who help to administer the gospel to our kids, to our communities. We ask that you would give your people boldness to confess your word, your truth, and to endure faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the loving kindness that you have shown to us in Christ Jesus, our Savior, who has delivered us from sin, death, fear of condemnation. We ask that you would give us uh, calm, that you would stay our hearts, that you would remove anxiety, remove depression, remove any sort of ailment that we uh, are wrestling with. We ask that you would bring confidence in your promises and hope in the power of the resurrection to all in affliction, especially those whom we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service as we celebrated this past Friday. Help us to honor their service by using our liberty responsibly. We ask that you would bless our nation, help us to protect and increase freedom for those who seek to have no fear from persecution and from danger. We ask that you would continue to enable us to live peaceable and quiet lives within our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give us repentant hearts that we would eat and drink the body and blood of Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins and to proclaim joyfully his death until he comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our tithes and our offerings.
service of the sacrament, please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Um, Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this preview, this foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Give us confidence and firm faith throughout all of our days that on the day of Christ's return, his second coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Full of announcements. Uh, Just uh, to note, last Sunday we voted to continue on our exploration of our overall campus. And like uh, the sermon today, to see how we can use this space to give out that foundation to give the gospel to people in every aspect. So pray for that, that that goes well as we explore that uh, for the next number of months, et cetera, and get a real dollar amount and a real plan together. Keep that in your prayers. This is your mission. It's your mission that God has uh, given us here. Um, And on that note, too, we're going to be doing a deeper, as we we, uh, would like to do, a stewardship deal next uh, spring. But remember this as we hit into, hit into fall, hit into Christmas, your commitment to the work of God here at St. James. Whether it's time, talent, or treasure, uh, we're not a franchise. Uh, there is no large uh, company that is giving, although I would say God is exactly that because somehow he keeps us going and keeps you going. But consider your commitment uh, to St. James, your tithing regularly, monthly, or whatever that is as a member of St. James um, this Christmas time, as you are looking at different aspects of giving, I encourage you to to actually join me in doing exactly that. Uh, We got this Friday, like I said, trivia night, what a blast. Christmas Fest is coming up. All this Christmas stuff, you can see it in our social media calendar, what's happening. Uh, Put it on your calendar, Christmas Eve. We have a 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and now 11 o'clock midnight service. So look at that. That's going to be a blast. See who shows up for that. Uh, Should be a special service uh, for Christmas Eve. But we have Wednesdays, Advent Wednesdays, our student stuff. Christmas Fest is coming up pretty soon, though. We need volunteers for that. Warren and I have got music, and we're getting a bunch of people to play music. I think we got Boy Scouts doing food. But we need a lot of different people to help things flow well for Christmas Fest. You can be there just for an hour, two hours. You don't need to be there the whole day. So please come sign up. You can sign up in our website or on our bulletin right here, whether it's our QR code code or... um, or online, uh, just checking it out, but we'd love to have you join us to help out. It's a beautiful time. Oh, another thing coming up here, angel tree. We're going to have an angel tree where you adopt a family uh, through the Salvation Army, kind of runs it. You adopt a family and uh, buy, they've got all the information in your on your, in your bulletin. and check that out. That's our service project for the month of December. Hey, let's sing our last song.
uh, snacks, coffee downstairs due to the cold. Go in peace, serve the Lord.